much for being part of uh, this session. There is a lot of opportunity for anybody doing business in India, particularly in the pharmaceutical sector. If there is anything that's proved that uh, Indian companies and, and Indian talents can really shine through, it is this sector which has seen such a transformation over the last couple of decades and it's been uh, on the front of this uh, battle to get India to excel and make a mark internationally from just being a cost-effective destination for pharmaceutical companies to do back-end work, this uh, market and this industry has grown from strength to strength. Uh, so we have uh, uh, Mr. Praveen Ayer, who is from Medrike, of course. We have uh, Dr. Bansi Lal, who is from Calex. Uh, Mr. Ranjit Shanti doesn't need an introduction. Uh, he is one of the uh, people who I think uh, an authority is on the Indian pharmaceutical industry. Also joining me is uh, Dr. P.M. Nair from Zydus Cadillac. So it's a full packed panel and you know, I think what I'd really like to, uh, how I'd really like to structure this discussion is to get each of these gentlemen to talk about what the opportunities are for their company from their standpoint. What, what do you think is the uh, challenge uh, at your company and the opportunity that you are very excited about? See, in our company, the challenge is that we want to now get into the U.S. market, which we have done already, and uh, we have enormous uh, demand for the products because uh, the quality is extremely good. We comply with all the GMP requirements, and the plant is already inspected uh, twice, and uh, we just now are having difficulty with the capacities. So the challenge is now want to have more capacity in the plant. In fact, we are trying to modify some of the plants where we can get US FDA approval very soon. So that's one uh, type of challenge which we are having. And the uh, second type of challenge we are having is to get into uh, newer areas like vaccines, because we, we do have vaccines, and, uh, but we do not have a cafeteria of vaccines. Mr. Chani, how is uh, Novartis looking at the Indian market right now and where does the opportunity lie for you? Uh, I think uh, all pharma companies and Novartis is no different. I uh, have two clusters of opportunities. Uh, one is the domestic opportunity and the other is the global opportunity. If you look at the domestic <laughs> opportunity, uh, I'm looking at three significant elements. Uh, one is the area of geographic expansion, which is access to medicine. Two-thirds of the Indian market uh, population has no access to medicine. The second one is in the area of innovation and IPR. Uh, and the third one, of course, is in the area of offshoring and outsourcing. Mm -hmm. So these are the three opportunities uh, one can look at. Dr. I think I'm basically I'm representing Carex, and the Carex being a relatively a small company and the companies around here, this gives an opportunity for us, especially we have build up a good research center. The combination of uh, catering the APIs globally, which we are already doing to some extent. And the second most important thing is the CRAM, which is quite a bit coming to the India, is the custom research area. Here the strengths are that if you have a proper setup and proper type of scientists, and as the meltdown has taken the European and American side, they really are looking for not only the, simply the cost factor, they are also looking at the intellectual part of it. So if you have the proper structure, you have the proper intellectual people with him, you really get the best piece of uh, cake from the whole thing over there. And there the opportunity comes in the fashion of really doing good science and also doing the good business. Okay. You know, at Medrex we have a sort of threefold challenges that we face today. We are primarily an exporter and we are now looking inwards into India as, an, as a market for opportunities. And for us the first challenge is to establish ourselves in this uh, though there's a huge opportunity in the Indian market, but it's extremely crowded space. So for us, the first challenge we'll have to get us are entrenched here in. The second challenge at Medtech, what we see is, uh, you know, the, the research development and where we classify ourselves as formulation development research, where we try and do niche research on development and uh, new drug delivery systems. Uh, we want this activity of uh, formulation development 
to get itself established in mid-sized companies. And for a mid-sized company like us, that poses a huge challenge uh, to see that we are able to sustain the path of development that we have taken on. And third, again, being a mid-sized company, the huge challenge is how to retain talent. In this stage, what has the slowdown and uh, the close to recession meant for the pharmaceutical industry? Because uh, one would argue that, one could argue in fact, that pharmaceuticals is the one sector that will stay away from any kind of recessionary pressure because you always need medicines and there is such a huge market that, that remains. Uh, Dr. Nat, well, what is your own assessment of, of the pain in the pharma pharmaceutical sector? My assessment is as far as domestic market, as the speaker said, there should be no problem at all, as you yourself indicated. The illness and sickness, they do not go with the recession. It is there. So, and you have to be treated. And uh, the people have money. It's not that uh, they will postpone things like automobiles and other things. But if somebody is ill, they will go for treatment. Absolutely. In the U.S., we've seen the Obama administration come into power on the basis of uh, cheaper health care. And that implies that a lot of the business will move towards India. But uh, what we've also seen is a lot of the global and big uh, pharmaceutical giants renew their uh, focus on India. Novartis, for example, is increasing its stake within the domestic uh, company that you hold over here. What is this? Is this a call that uh, India is where the growth is, or is this a call that India's cost-effective basis is going to actually help these pharmaceutical giants to expand? Well, I think uh, both the opportunities exist. One is the emerging markets, uh, which is India, China, Brazil, Russia. All these markets are opportunities where growth is taking place at double digits. If you take Europe and US, it's single digits or low. So obviously, that is a segment of market that global companies are going to look at very actively. On the other hand, the opportunities for national companies is tremendous because 62% of the prescriptions in the US are already generic. And with the ballooning healthcare costs, that's clear an opportunity. But the challenge is to ensure uh, that the standards <coughs> remain good, better. And I said earlier on, the US FDA, and God, they believe the rest they audit. Mm -hmm. So I think the degree of scrutiny is going to get tougher and tougher. But of course, the norms are exacting because yeah. it, it is tough to actually set up that. You've seen the biggest players, uh, Ranbaxi, have a problem with the Ponta Sahib uh, you know, facility that they had. They ran into trouble with the FDA. Uh, Dr. Lal, what are the challenges when, when a small company like yours goes out to do business and tries yeah. to upgrade your own facilities to those levels? What are the challenges? Actually, you as you rightly said, that uh, the financing which has been taking place earlier was free and as the banks themselves have held back a little bit, this will be a little bit difficult for the people at times. But the fact also remains, I think it's going to be a hybrid model for the Indian setup. It can't be that you will only be having the big, big players playing, playing around. We still have a vast you know, population which is not being catered. So if you have to survive even as a smaller type of, so you can't survive at the bottom. You have to raise to the level of a particular quality, a particular science. That is how natural filtration, it will be natural attrition taking place in those cases. Those who are conscious know that they are going to be in this field. You can't play with the games of the small things who are there. Obviously all those who want to be, there is a natural filtration, people are, will merge this, these things will happen. But lots of the people on the lower side are the, Smaller companies know very clearly that the only way to survive is to have your quality proper. Okay. And you can even cater to the bigger boys also, that which is done even in the United States. So there is enough room for the people to grow even at which are not that high at the moment. But if you do it very rightly and you know what you are doing, and the banks can also after some period of it, uh, my personal feeling is that it's a really a short period of time. Banks can't keep their money in the pocket, they also want to see it growing. So at the end of the day, if they keep it for a few days or this, because everybody is keeping it in there, finally they will also go out and see who are doing the best and why not put it there. The free flowing credit, uh, Dr. Naif, also meant a lot of companies try to expand very fast. Uh, you know, uh, instead of looking at the core of the R&D and doing, you know, better research, they wanted to go into the services side to do a lot of other businesses. Uh, is that going to take a big... Uh, hit right now in, in this period of uh, consolidation, you think? Uh, I would say no, because since the opportunity is there, and if you see in India, we don't spend very high capex, capital expenditure on projects. So, and everybody goes by a modular structure. You expand, make yeah. a modular, and then you expand. Yeah. Then I think investment will not stop. Maybe postponed for a month or two or three, 
but investments will continue in the Indian industry. That's a timed assessment, months or two or three. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Then we'll uh, carry on the discussion actually. Today, uh, everybody is talking about supplying to the rural areas and uh, of course urban areas. The biggest problem is uh, the supply chain, the lack of uh, cold chain and the non-air condition of the medical stores. The storage conditions are awful. So how do you say that uh, uh, we supply, we don't supply substandard product? That's a very, very practical consideration. You spoke about the speed of movement uh, from the manufacturing hub to the, the shop to the uh, chemist, and that is also one aspect, but the other is, of course, storage. So what can you do to ensure that they are taking care of it? You know, uh, we, we are also a manufacturer, and, you know, first of all, this whole concept of supply chain has to be revisited by the government and by all of us, because you know, the, all the quality stringent norms are info, enforced at the manufacturer's level, which is no complaints there. You know, we are responsible for that. But supply chain does not end at the factory gate. You know, it actually only starts. The time that the product reaches the hands of the consumer, it, it does travel kilometers and kilometers. Now, the problem is from the factory gate up to that level, the, the, all the industry is able to stand up to stringent quality norms. But after that, there's absolutely laser stare. There is no control on what happens. Partner Barista, online partner Yahoo.com, multiplex partner Cinemax, mobile partner 197. By the time you have finished your tea, your banking is done. That's SBI Internet Banking for you. Easy, convenient, and secure. SBI. Now, just a click away. Look good. Ah, yaar. Look good. Take a look at me, karodo, chapane ka khe. Kismat hi, kismat hai. Baaki sab hai fail. Yeah! Chitka kisi ne maara. That nobody can do anything no, about. No, right it is India. possible. It's possible if the government stops mushrooming the medical stores. We don't need so many medical stores. And today these medical stores go on giving 10%, 15% discounts, and we don't know what they're selling. And the margin is 16%. So there is a lack of will at the part of the government to do proper uh, regularization of the supply chain. There is some very serious Absolutely. problem on this. Absolutely. And we are supplying some standard medicine to this Indian public, and we are responsible for it. What is the kind of focus that is given to the supply chain management? I mean, that must be a multi-layered, very, very complex network that supports industry. Uh, it does, and that is why I keep saying again and again, we need a complete ecosystem for this. I think the rules exist. They're very stringent, but I think implementation of that is not effective enough. If we make those implementation effect effective, whatever exists will dramatically improve. But I think the big challenge is as you go into the rural areas, you need stakeholders and investors to come in to build that supply chain. And it'll happen. I think in the richness and fullness of time, it is going to happen. Yeah, if you the, take fact, the, yeah, the fact is still, I think, let's go to the ground down. Infrastructure is still so against the entire setup that if you have to travel to a village and get these things across, Cold storage. They are still trying. 
a special packs have been developed. I know very clearly there are special packs, especially for the vaccine and other things. Right. That drug is going all over the place. Dr. Nayak, you were talking about how Zyrus Cadillac is looking at going into the U.S. and expanding. Uh, what do you think uh, will be the face of the Indian pharmaceutical industry in, say, about 10 to 15 years? <coughs> no, as I just said, you know, there is some sort of uh, exaggeration when we say there are 80 billion opportunities waiting. But that 80 billion in terms of the price erosion, it will become 8 billion. <laughs> so you just cannot go on adding and making averages. So this is one factor, but the, even in a country where 8 billion is the current situation, another 8 billion coming is doubling, which will be a satisfactory situation. Right. Mr. If you look at what growth has happened in the Indian pharmaceutical industry, both domestic and export arena, I am one for sure that whatever time we have taken to reach here, we will not take so much of time to reach where we want to go next 15 years. Uh, you know, if you look at the pharmaceutical industry opportunity and you add allied opportunities in a cooperative research platform, in a cooperative clinical research platform, and you put all together, uh, I definitely see India in the next 15 years uh, to be among the top uh, five uh, countries in terms of its uh, pharmaceutical potential. You know, one question that was raised when um, Ranbaxi's promoters sold to Daichi was the fact that it's a, one of the biggest players in the pharmaceutical space is deciding and taking a conscious call to get into the, the hospital side of the business, the, you know, the more financial side of the business and get, get out of the generics business wholeheartedly. Does it indicate that there are points of stress and does that question, uh, raise questions about the survival of the smaller players? Uh, what is your own assessment of the situation? Do you think that was a personal choice that, uh, that of the company to get out of it and it doesn't reflect the, the low margin, competitive uh, kind of landscape that generic manufacturers are uh, working yes. under? If you segregate between uh, what the promoters have done and uh, what the business of Ranbaxi is, uh, one could see it more clearly because Ranbaxi as a company uh, still doing strong. Mm. Uh, promoters have exercised their personal options. Uh, you know, it's not a bad model that you scale up a business to a certain level and at, at some point in time you feel that, you know, uh, this is fine. You would like to continue to run the business but you would not like to own the business. And if you find a great suitor, uh, I don't think it's wrong because all over in US, building a business and exiting of the business is a natural phenomenon. And probably we are not used to seeing that in India as much. Let's round off this discussion and we started off by talking about the opportunities that each one of you was seeing in the business. Uh, but as each one of you has also pointed out, there is, a, there is a, a basic opportunity that a company has, but there is also the reality of what is around. So what is the best way to translate this opportunity into real tangible action? And what would you like to see from policymakers? From my technical angle, is to maintain the quality under GMP condition and the inspecting agencies which will be more agile and will be more frequently visiting, you have to make them happy by following exactly the GMP guidelines. Uh, you know, from the policy point of view, I think the pharma policy, uh, we are looking forward to one which will actually provide more incentives to R&D. It will not have draconian price control. On the regulatory side, of course, I'd like to see data protection and, of course, uh, patent law, which is world class in being. No, I think I can take directly from this patent type of thing. I think there is still a lot of requirement of educating what, how the patents have to be taken care of, especially even the examiners. We really don't have the people here. It's a lot of, like, in particular area of the research, we always talk about these things. But when you go back, you look at the academia and others, nobody knows what to do with these type of things. So we need a little bit of, to go back in backwards, even in the academia, and make the people conscious that there's a lot of room, there's a lot of facilities available over there's a lot of the carrier over there. That is the most important thing if we really want to be somebody in the, in the pharma side. Right. You know, the, our industry is industry for the patient, and also we have to be patient in this industry. And we expect uh, the regulatory authorities to be patient in this. And also, uh, there's a huge scope for a public-private partnership in this, whether it's a cold chain, whether it's R&D, uh, alone the corporate can't do much in this, and we will like to see 
a lot of involvement. Uh, I'm not saying there is no involvement, but we'd like to see increased level of involvement. Right, and uh, to sum it, I think uh, the pharmaceutical industry in India is best placed, considering you have a huge market that remains untapped in India, and you have pretty much every country looking at uh, the far better cost realization on drugs, and hence there's a huge market out there. So on that very positive note, thank you all for joining me on this thank panel, you so and thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. We now move to the Pharmaceutical Leadership Awards, one of the most respected personalities in the pharmaceutical industry who has been conferred on the Lifetime Achievement Award here today is Sri Sampradha Singh. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Mr. Sampradha Singh. May I now request Mr. B.N. Singh to come forward and receive the Lifetime Achievement Award on behalf of Mr. Sampradha Singh. The next Lifetime Achievement Award for Pharmaceuticals Industry. It's my privilege to announce the name of Mr. Suresh Kare, Chairman and Managing Director of Indoco Remedies Limited. The next recipient of the Lifetime Achievement Award is Mr. Desh Bandhu Gupta. May I now request the representative from Lupin to come forward and receive the award. The next Lifetime Achievement Award is being conferred on Mr. Jagdish Saxena, Chairman and Managing Director, Elder Pharmaceuticals Limited. Yet another Lifetime Achievement Award goes to uh, Sri Ajit Singh, Chairman ACG Worldwide, and Sri Jasjit Singh, Managing Director, ACG Worldwide. May I now request a representative from ACG Worldwide to come forward and receive the award on behalf of Sri Ajit Singh and Sri Jasjit Singh. May I now request Sri Manohar Kotari to come on the dais. He is our esteemed recipient of the Lifetime Achievement Award. Sri Manohar Kotari is the Managing Director of Indo-German Pharma Equipment Private Limited. 